Hey guys, good morning. Happy Friday. Welcome to Pearls of Eden. Today I want to talk to you about Romans 7, the war between the flesh and the spirit. Paul does a great job in trying to explain how the law no one can keep, right? But it's by the death and burial and resurrection of Christ that our sins have been atoned with for and we can walk in the liberty of Christ. So Father God, as I go into your word, this is a very complicated text to deliver, but we know that you have the ability to open up our hearts, open up our eyes and our ears so that we can receive the revelation within this text. Lord, may I decrease so that you increase in me. May you think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your guidance. In Jesus' name I pray, I thank you, amen. So we see in this particular scripture, Paul is trying to explain that how none can keep the law, how as long as we're in this dead body of flesh, we will always be warring, the Bible says, against the flesh and the spirit. Yeah, there's a war and we get up and we fight it every day. We put on the armor of God and Paul explains like there is a member in his body it's the member of sin, and then there's the member of, and then he has the spirit, you know, and he's warring, he's fighting. He says, I do things that I know I shouldn't do, and I don't want to do. I hate the sin that's within this dead body. And brothers and sisters, we will be in a war to fight the flesh until we get our renewed immortal bodies. Until then, until we get our glorified bodies, we have a war between the spirit and the flesh. And we gotta understand that. It's not gonna be a cakewalk. It's not like you get saved and all of a sudden all of these desires just go away, no. But the spirit of God helps you to contend. The spirit of God within you helps you to fight every day. And it is by Christ's salvation that he has given us by his dying on the cross, being crucified. We are dead to sin and resurrected in him. But until we get our glorified bodies, this dead flesh, until we get our new bodies, we have to contend. But the good news is that Christ paid the price. And Paul does this, it's such a difficult chapter to explain. That's why my prayer was that I could make it simple and that God could speak through me and take this complicated text and help us to all understand, me included. Romans 7 is a very difficult text. And you see him explaining, he compares it, Paul compares it to marriage. He says, you know, when someone's married, the only way they're free from their husband, free from that obligation, is if the husband dies. Well, in this chapter, he compares that to Christ dying for us, that he made us free from the sin of the, of, of the law of sin and death. Through him, we are made righteous, not by our own strength can we be righteous, not by our own good works, but by the by the atonement that was made for us on the cross. You know, the law is like a training wheel. It teaches us, it shows us, you know, the it shows us how to ride the bike. It shows us what is the expectation. It shows us what is sin, but it doesn't keep us from not being able to break those commandments. It just is a reflection. It just shows us what's in us. And so it's really important that we understand that, you know, because even though the law is there, it's like human, human, we always want to test our boundaries. So the moment you say we cannot do something, guess what? Then it looks all glorious. And that's when you want to go out there and do it. It's like a kid. You tell him, hey, don't go put your hands in the cookie jar. If you turn your back, you just tempted him. You just made it. You just highlighted it, right? Now all he's thinking about is that cookie jar. And, you know, most kids will go in there and what? And they will test it. And so we just have to understand that the law just shows us what's in us. But it doesn't help us to keep it. No man can just keep all those laws. Only one. That was Jesus Christ, right? And he paid the price for us so that we can be made righteous in him. So Paul just says, you know, he's like, I'm warned every day. And the thing about it is, as Christians, when we get saved, 
you know, we don't love the sin like we used to love it and want to, but we actually despise it. It's actually war. Like, God, help me to overcome this. God, I don't want to do this. It's a battle. You're not just sitting there giving in to sin. And that is the difference, right? Because there's a new spirit within you. You are a new creation on the inside. You have a renewed mind. So you understand that I don't want to do that. I don't seek to do that. I don't walk in willful sin. Am I human? Will I make mistakes because I am still in this earthly flesh suit? Yes, you're going to make mistakes, but they're not willful mistakes. You're not purposefully enjoying walking in sin. And that's what Paul tries to explain. We have to understand that we are dead in Christ. We were buried with him. And we are resurrected alive in him. It is through him that we have the victory. This is why it's so important that you understand that Christ is the way, the life, and the truth. Because without him, there is no atonement for your sin. You couldn't keep the law. We couldn't keep the law. That's why God had to send his son who was the only one that could. And we have to put on the robe of righteousness every day, knowing that it is in him that the work is finished and that by his grace, by the spirit of God, which will go on to Romans 8, Paul will begin to talk about the spirit, the Holy Spirit, which we've been talking about all week, is the one that will enable you and empower you to overcome the sin in your life. But you must be filled with the Spirit of God. He's going to give you new desires. Like I said, God is the what? The vine dresser. Jesus is the vine. We are but branches. And as we abide in him and walk with him and renew our minds in the word of God, our desires will change. But like Paul said, every day we have to put on the armor of God. We have to be able to contend and fight because this flesh it wants to do what it wants to do. This flesh is very um, sinful. It's carnal. That's why we have to walk by the Spirit. Sons of God walk by the Spirit. So today, I just want to remind you, you know, a lot of times we get caught up in the law. I got to do this. I got to do that. No, there is liberty in Christ. God sent his son to fulfill the law because we couldn't do it. And anytime you keep trying to uphold yourself to fulfilling the law and not through Christ, you're going to fall short. That's what Paul was saying. I thank God for Christ because I couldn't do it. I could not keep all of these 613 laws plus, but I thank God for Christ that he has fulfilled the law. In him, I am made righteous. You cannot be made right. Try it. You'll fall short every time. But through him, through Christ, you'll have the victory. And the spirit of God will help you to walk in a way that is pleasing to the father where you're not abusing him. Grace does not teach us to abuse God. No, no, no. When you love someone, you are going to go over and beyond to do what pleases them because you have a desire to do so. But it's not because it's just you are so holy. It's because he is so holy and because you are walking with him and you're being obedient, filled with the spirit. Now, let me say this. It's the spirit of God that helps you to obey. You have to pray for the spirit of obedience to come upon your life. That was one of the first things the father uh, impressed upon me. Pray that the um, Holy Spirit, pray that you have the obedience to walk in a way that is pleasing to me. Pray for instant obedience was what he specifically told me. And at that time, I was a new baby Christian. I mean, I have been walking with, I knew God all my life. I've been baptized since I was about five years old, got rebaptized when I was 13. But when I say really walking with the Lord, he opened my eyes to the things of God. It wasn't just formalities anymore. I began to really walk with him. He began to really teach me. And I had to become a student. That means I was like, I don't know nothing, Lord. I remember asking God, teach me how to worship. Teach me how to pray. I know now that that was the Holy Spirit within me. Having all of these desires and asking God and showing me how to pray. I didn't know these things. That was the Holy Spirit asking me, speaking through me, saying, hey, go pray for obedience. 
This is why we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because he knows what we need. He knows the things that we ought to pray for that we have no clue about. And I'll look back and I'm like, my God, that's why I had to pray for instant obedience. I had no idea that that was such a critical, um, obedience was such a critical part of my walk. I, I just didn't know that. But now I see and I understand why. So I don't want to make the video long, but I wanted to come on and I wanted to talk to you all about that because so many believers struggle with that and they feel like they are less than or they feel like they can't just get it right. No, we're in a battle. As long as you're in this flesh, you got a battle. None of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. No one you see on television is perfect. No, we all are warring up every day. We are all fighting the good fight and it is God who will help us to finish the work. It is God who will complete the work that he started. And we have to trust that. All right, guys, I love you. I pray that this word is a blessing. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your family. Um, spend time with God. Make time for him. All right, guys. Bye.